is a Hoover celebrity. Pretty much one of the only celebrity models that we got in the UK. We certainly didn't get the interesting type of ones. We might have got one or two. They certainly weren't that popular in the UK. Not compared to the Hoover constellation. This one belongs to the same person as the two Hoover constellations that we have been dealing with. And apparently doesn't work at all. We're going to find out what could possibly be wrong with it, see if we can punch some life back into it and work out if it's going to be a viable project or not. Let's have a look. <sighs> yes, hello. My vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? Yes, made in the USA, these came across along with there was a ranger, there was an orange one of these, there was an orange constellation, I think there was some sort of strike on in the UK, so they pulled a shipment of stuff over from the US and lobbed a 240 volt motor in it. Yeah, this one's completely dead, apparently, so, I mean, you know, but we're not greeted with a humongous chunk of rust. So, I guess that's good. Um, the switch, I mean, the switch is always one to check. I mean, it clicks. If it's all mushy or, you know, there's like a second click, it's normally not that great. But no, that seems fine. There's no you know, massive gouges in the cable. We even have quite a reliable looking plug look. Nice retro Volex. There's probably not going to be anything wrong with the plug per se, but as any good fault finding of electrical appliances should begin. We shall have a look in here and see that, well, that all seems fine. I mean, the live terminal isn't perhaps too lovely, but I mean, it's it's sort of in there. I think we'll tidy up the plug wiring and I'll get the multimeter out and check the fuse. And if all is okay, well, I guess we'll plug it in and see if it is actually dead, which is all I've been told. Yeah, no, nothing wrong with the plug or the fuse at all. Yeah, she is completely and utterly dead, although, hey, the lights didn't turn out, so I guess that is a bonus. Oh, so that means it's time to, it's already open, to delve into a Hoover celebrity. It's been a little while, and I mean, we can't take the motor out this way. However, what we shall do to start with is remove, well, there's gonna be four, I think, three or four. We've got to take, well, loosen that one, but we'll take it out. And there's one here. I can see one the other side, as can you. This will give us access to one of the electrics, so we can see if anything's broken or, gone physically wrong or x y and z ha, there we go Ugh, do not lubricate we won't do that what could be wrong with this well we're unplugged so we can now take a screwdriver and check that actually the motor is barely turning at all wow oh i think our problem is the motor for sure, there is something quite significantly wrong with it, which oh, means that we have to take the motor out of a Hoover celebrity. So the first thing I'm going to do is lubricate these nuts, which we're going to have to take off first. Oh my goodness. I'm going to take the wiring out, take some reference photos, get those nuts loosened because you do not want to snap these off and then we'll come back when we actually take the motor out marvellous they came off a treat i have had them strip out before and it's a pain i've peeled this back i mean look again you can see somebody's gone to the effort of trying but <laughs> we always find it now in theory if we lift up on this the bottom plate and the motor will stay put yes on a hoover celebrity this is how things work Ooh, my goodness look at that so yeah we'll we'll put that out of the way you don't need that pretty sure you should yep come off of there they go yeah big rubbery seal what we need to start with is and one's already come off these white clips one two and the third one has come off oh wow 
Yeah, our poor motor, look, is barely turning. Oh my goodness, these are horrible. <sighs> okay, 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 okay. We'll put the very fragile white clip to one side. I mean, yeah, this this has been used bagless for sure, and I'm imagining that is what the main problem is. Okay, think, Becco, think. First of all, we are going to pop the carbon brushes out. That way we won't damage them by doing what we're about to do in a minute. And hey, they're, they're good carbon brushes. They're okay, there's one there. I'll have to screw out. And there is another one here. Also, no RF suppressor, so hey, that's the second vacuum that I've done over the last couple of days that doesn't have one of those. Isn't that lovely? Right, you go there, you go there, and then at least we won't rip these apart when we do the next horrible job, and that is we have to put some sort of socket on this nut here. And it's very difficult to do, really, because it's right next to this piece of metal. So I'm afraid of what I do is I smack that out of the way, and then it's much easier to just get a standard. I mean, this is an 8mm, it's not an 8mm at all you need how much it is but they're a really weird shallow size but eventually these will come off and then oh it's it's stuck on and i thought that was something else but no that is the joint so okay that can go there oh come on release Obviously, we've got to get the armature out of the top part now, which is... Aha! Oh, but then we've got to sort of push the wires. Ah, no, we can take the wires out. Hang on, they're just spade connectors. But, 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 we need some pliers. No, they're... Ah! What? Phoenix, where's all the tools gone? There we go, so, wow, lots of chunks of dirt everywhere, including, yeah, a very rusty bearing, so that's not going to be helping matters at all. Crikey, that feels sharp. <laughs> we'll put that down. Yeah, and now we all suddenly spin a lot better, but we're not coming all of this way without just going that one step further. So now that this is off we should be able to pull out the coil there we go and we need these two springs which go on those bolts that we took out and yeah now all of a sudden we do spin really really well next thing that we would do is probably take the fan off but i don't know if we're especially yes we are because i can see chunks in there hang on we shall go and get not that size this size. It's always easier to do the fans when you can remove them completely from the motor because then you can hold the armature. Right, some space. This is going back together in a couple of seconds. So, nut, washer, fan, washer. These annoyingly will come out. Not a lot we can do there. Plate. And yeah, look, we can get all of this out. And yeah, this bearing spins okay it is a sealed bearing but there's nothing actually wrong with that so what we can do is yeah uh, annoyingly you have to assemble this with its nut it's a bit easier to take it apart without it but what we're going to do for now is i can't really replace that bearing at all i don't have the right equipment to decrimp it and then crimp it back on but that will do it will seep in well enough. And then, well, we're going to go and get MBV. Ah, not much up. We're going to get dust.
that if this poor thing's going to stand any chance of not then sounding like an aeroplane when we turn it on, we've got to do something about this fan. Oh dear, yeah. Lots and lots of bag that's used for this poor floaty boy. There we go, that's probably going to do it. I, I think this is going to come apart again for a full strip down. But, I mean, we've got to see if it works, haven't we? Even though I now, I guess, at the point where I can just wash it now and we can put it back together. That would ruin the fun, wouldn't it? Eh. Come on. I don't want this to completely knacker the bearing up straight away. Right, so we don't actually need all of these bits for now. We just need to start with this on that way around, wasn't it? Ugh, and then build it all back up. So I'm going to yeah, put this back together and we shall see if it spins any better. There we go. The best way I actually found to do that was to start off with the vise. Wide enough to slot this in, put your bolts into the bottom, and then stand the whole thing up, and then springs on, coiling, armaturing, and look, it now free spins. Absolute treat, just by taking it apart and putting it back together again. Isn't that a treat? So, um, I fully remember which way around things went now. That went on there, ready to go up into the motor housing. Oh, come on. It's fiddly. Oh, dang it. Should have put this on first. Now I've got to try and get it over this ridge of metal. And then from there on, we just put it all back together, really. So we had a spacer there, washer, oh, fan. It still needs washing. <sighs> spacer. And then you can put the nut on. Now this is where things are going to get difficult because now this thing free spins like an absolute treat. You've got to hold it and I don't actually have the right size spanner for this. What we're going to have to do is get some mould whips. Oh, a bit tighter than that please. Thank you. And then you get a screwdriver and you can turn the armature and snug it up ah, nicely like that. Ah, and then... Yeah, look, our motor now spins a treat and should probably fire up. I'm going to now assemble it back into the machine and we'll see if it's going to run. Okay, so we are back together in theory. We obviously assume that it's switched on. This should work. Okay, so the switch, put that. I think the switch might be dodgy as well. That isn't helping. Yeah. Oh, I've been having issues with the switch. Motor spins tight now, so it shouldn't be that. Nah. We might have to fit another switch quickly. Last try. Yeah, no, dang it. Oh, we come back when I have whatever this is sold. I'm fairly sure it's the switch. Sounded good, didn't it? Oh my goodness, what happened there? What on earth happened there? Um, back apart it goes. In only 27 tries, she runs. What was wrong? Well, where are we? 
This is the switch that came out of it. There isn't continuity all the time. It's very, very thick. Obviously, the motor wouldn't have turned even if it wanted to. And the final nail in the coffin was somewhere in here. The neutral cable is broken, for goodness sake. So, yeah, now it runs. After all that, I can go away, get it washed, cleaned up, actually sounding nice. We've got to wash the fan and come back to you shortly, but hopefully it will sound a bit better than that. And three days later, we have what I think is a very nice result. I mean, the paint didn't fall off. That's always a bonus. Everything came up really, really well. It was greasy. Literally had to wash it with degreaser. It was very, very strange. But now... The motor sounds incredibly nice too. Inside, here's a little bit of a revelation hack that I found. You see, do you remember from Barton's when I picked up several of these and I went, oh, these are gonna be handy. Well, this is the sort of thing I had in mind. These are a pain to fit bags to. A, because that is incredibly small. B, because you don't have a lot of room before obviously the original ones wrap around but you look on ebay and find hoover celebrity bags they will pretty much be made of printer paper the look, even comes with a filter although sadly yeah it's not quite big enough for that yeah they're lovely so i'm gonna chuck these in here and give them to the owner of this celebrity because you know they're small but that's all you're gonna need if you use it occasionally and store it away. It's not going to be filled with dirt. I mean, it means there's lots of room for activity. So, you know, we can put our bags there. The bag sits here that you could even fit your breakfast if you really wanted to do it. It all works quite well. And again, we can turn the thing on. <laughs> and no, it all works very well. Our Mila pre-motor filter fits in there a treat, the lid drops down and we can close the lid on yet another finished project. And before we close the lid on this video entirely, yes, of course, the plug was refurbished. So we have our very nice Volex. This was on the machine when we got it and now it can stay on there with a new lease of life. So obviously, yeah, you got to, this is where the downside of it being a Hoover celebrity comes into play. Oh, I'm running out of cord. I don't have one on me, so this is going to be a pain. <sighs> Far less. There. Little hard. Obviously, we don't have a hose, so there's not a lot more we can do to this video, which is why I thought we'd get a little bit technical. There we go. Look, the, the, the trick is you don't want to chip paint. There we go, that will sit there like that, because then when you hold it upright, it doesn't all fall off everywhere, which is what these do. Yeah, this bottom, it was covered in grease. It was, yeah, it's, it's not minty now, but it's all right. Oh, look, a little bit of dust there. No matter how much you clean a motor, even in its component form, it'll blow out a load of dust as soon as you turn it on. So, do you have a Hoover Celebrity? Do you like it? Do you use it often? And yeah, those bags are pretty cool. I, I, I do have a few, so hopefully we can get some on eBay and you can experience the immensely improved airflow that these have. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And I and some other Hoover in need of help will see you soon. Happy vacuuming. Mm -hmm.